we are excited to begin. I am Dr. Wildy. I am the Director of Elementary Education, and with me is Dr. Alice Lee, and we are going to screen share the presentation and introduce you to some fantastic people we have here today. All right. Let's see. Um, we do have the chat available as well, so if anybody has any questions throughout this webinar, please feel free to use the chat. I'd like to start by giving a special thank you to our elementary principals that we have. We have Dr. Hernandez from Mayor Catalina joining us, and we have Mr. Banal from Lanada Bay. And from the intermediate school, we have Principal Jaime Mancia. And from the high school, we have Kim Choi, Sachiko Iwami, Nancy Wei, Mariana Donahoe, uh, who helped contribute to this webinar, but is not here today, and Amy Byrne. Okay, right. we're going to start with our elementary dual immersion update, and that is going to be Dr. Hernandez. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for making time and joining us this evening. Um, we are so excited to be piloting a dual immersion program here in Palos Verdes. So myself here at Mary Catalina, along with Mr. Bernal at Lanada Bay, are the proud recipients of the dual immersion program. This will be starting in kindergarten, and the cohort of students will travel all the way throughout to fifth grade, and they will be receiving the majority of their instruction in Spanish. Don't worry if you don't speak Spanish. The materials that go home will be in English, so you can help your child however necessary at home. But um, I don't think I said that right. But I meant to. So the majority of the materials are going to be in and the instruction will be in Spanish, but the homework that comes home will be of a caliber that will allow you to, to help them in English as well. It will be starting in kindergarten and the acceptance to the dual immersion program is lottery based. Um, and I know spots are filling up quickly, so make sure to get your name in if it is something that you are interested in. Um, the majority of the um, at least starting in kindergarten will be 90% of the instruction will be given in Spanish, 10% will be given in English. Um, and every year that the student progresses through, it levels out to 50-50. So by the time they are in fifth grade, they will be receiving 50% of their instruction in English and 50% in Spanish. Um, we will be starting this next year. So we are already getting ready and are very, very excited. Thank you so much, Dr. Wildy. Um, you can go on to the next slide. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. Um, I'm Raphael Berlin. I'm the principal of Lunata Bay Elementary. And like uh, Dr. Hernandez says, very excited about having our dual immersion. Some other Spanish opportunities that our district has um, right now that some of our elementary schools offer before and after school Spanish intervention. Uh, more of our elementary schools are looking into this option as well for the future. In addition to that, the PEF, Peninsula Education Foundation, also offers Spanish enrichment after school. And through the PEF program, Spanish is introduced through interactive games, which also include craft activities, story time, and songs. Kids are having a great time doing that, uh, hearing a lot of positive feedback from families and students on that. So lots of fun there and uh, lots of Spanish happening at our schools. So thank you, Dr. Wildy. All right, I guess it's my turn. We're on Intermediate World Language. Um, I'm Jaime Mancia, and when uh, the team asked me to join in and, and talk about this subject, this is near and dear to my heart. As a product of a Spanish immersion program in elementary school, I was in Spanish immersion program in Culver City for, for four years, and I ended up be, um, being so in love with the, the learning of the language that I became a Spanish major, went on to teach Spanish for 17 years, um, as as a teacher, and so now, yes, I'm I'm happy to speak be speaking and thrilled that 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 the district is finally adopting a dual immersion program as well. Um, at the intermediate school, at our school, we actually offer two languages. We offer Chinese and we offer Spanish. Um, I'll speak real fast about Chinese, and then I think Miss Wei is going to speak a little bit more about it at, at the high school level. But for us, we teach high school level Chinese one and Chinese two. We offer those two classes. There's just two classes. 
um, offered in the morning um, by one of our teachers. So we offer Chinese here, but then we also offer our Spanish program. And our Spanish program starts with an introduction to Spanish in sixth grade. It's a trimester course. And it just basically gives them some exposure to the language, gives them some basics so that they can actually function if they were to travel, you know, over the weekend down, down south. Um, but it's a nice introduction to the language and just, you know, just test it out for the first trimester or for one trimester in sixth grade. In seventh and eighth grade, they have an opportunity, our students have an opportunity to take um, one year courses of, seven, of, of Spanish one and Spanish two. These, like Chinese, are both um, college level or high school level classes. They are UC approved, they're A, A through G level approved for high school. So the students that take these courses, can get into the high school and start in either Spanish three or Chinese three um, if they continue and they're maintaining a good strong grade. And the best part about that is that it can actually get into AP level courses in both of these languages um, relatively early in their in their high school career. Um, the actual study of language in Spanish one and Spanish two is, like I said, high school level. So they're doing all the things, same things that they're doing um, in Spanish one or Chinese one or uh, Spanish one and two and Chinese one and two at the high school level. They're learning a little bit about culture. They're learning a little bit about, they're of course learning the language and and, um, and getting full immersion into the, the language at, at the same time. Um, and the teachers like to keep it fun and interactive. So they use a bunch of different technology. They use games like Kahoot and Quizlet to, to, to test the students and to check, check their knowledge. Um, and I've sat in the classrooms numerous times and it's just very cool to watch our students speaking in the target language throughout the entire, entire period, which is not an easy thing to do, um, but they, you know, that just shows you how well they progress at this level. And so, that, like I said, I'll repeat, as far as the dual language immersion program at the elementary school, it is fantastic because the earlier the exposure to the language, the more successful those students will be as they progress to, into high school. And that's it for me, I'm gonna pass it on to the high school team. Please unmute. Hello, everyone. My name is Nancy Wei. I'm a Chinese teacher at the Palace of Vidis High School. It's my great pleasure to introduce our Chinese program. So um, currently, we offer Chinese 1 and 2 at intermediate schools, uh, including Richcrest and PVIS, just like um, Mr. Uh, Lan mentioned before. We have Chinese 1, 2, regular 3, 3 honors, regular four, four AP at both Peninsula High School and the Palace of Vidis High School. At the PV High, we also have Chinese five. Chinese one to eight, four AP are for language and cultural learning, while Chinese five focus on cultural learning. Hi, I'm Amy Byrne. I am the French teacher at Palace Verdes High School. And um, so we are a three, three person, and team. Um, we have two French teachers at Penn High and one French teacher, myself, at PV High, and we offer a full four-year program. Um, there are two, uh, four years of regular language learning, um, and we offer an honors track in level three and level four, including uh, AP, which is a course designed by the College Board. Hi, my name is Sachiko Iwami. I'm, I'm one of the two Japanese teachers at Peninsula High School. As you see, Japanese is offered only at Peninsula, and we have Japanese one, two, three, four, and then three honors and an AP course. Um, Japanese one is offered for eighth graders um, for them to take during the zero period of class as well. Hi. Hi, hi. My name is Jun Choi. I um, teach Korean at Peninsula High School. So at both high school, we offer Korean um, one through four. One is also offered to eighth grader from um, three middle schools um, during zero period. And we have Korean, we teach, we, uh, both high school have Korean one two um, and three honors and four honors are use distinguished honors um, course.
I think I'm also speaking for Spanish. So um, in Spanish, in addition to the courses at the middle school, at the high school level, we offer levels one through five in Spanish. Uh, we also offer uh, two AP courses, uh, AP Language and AP Literature. Um, those are uh, college board uh, courses, as well as a three honors course. And of course, Spanish is a very popular program um, at the high school level. Can you unmute Nancy? Um, so uh, I will start to talk about the Chinese curriculum. Um, thanks to the district support this year, we have upgraded our learning materials to the newest version of our textbooks, Integrate Chinese fourth edition published by Chen and Cui in Boston. Our textbooks are also popularly used at the college level. All students and the teachers have printed textbooks and workbooks. We use them to conduct various activities such as speaking exercises, reading contests, and other games. Workbooks are mainly for homework and uh, classwork. In addition, teachers have additional digital versions which provide more supplementary materials such as videos, audio recordings, flashcards, and more interactive materials. Students have access to audio and video materials. For AP courses, students and teachers have AP Classroom designed by College Board, which provides AP exam-driven prep materials. Wide range of learning materials make our learning more engaging and interesting. For our Chinese One was designed for students who have zero learning experience or background. They will start by learning basics such as Chinese pronunciation system, Hanyu Pinyin, that's the name of our pronunciation system. As you can see, we use uh, the English alphabet letters for the sound. Uh, we include uh, consonants and the vowels, okay? And in Chinese language, we have four um, tones. So um, we have one, two, three, and four. So each of them representing uh, a sound for each characters. For example, this is a chart of the, the numbers from one to 10, each character has a pinging, initial and final and tone mark. Okay, so um, the pinging is the tool to use to learn the pronunciation for the characters, but the characters are the ones we actually use. And in our district, we're learning simplified Chinese Mandarin, but traditional version are also accommodated and all our materials are designed in both versions, simplified version and traditional versions. So it's very convenient for everyone. Um, and then after that, after the pronunciation system, Chinese students are, try, are, are going to learn the writing system. Everything has a rules, right? The most common comments we heard about uh, learning Chinese is that Chinese language is so hard. <laughs> I believe um, the main concern is about the writing because the characters look complicated. However, everything has rules. So those are the one of the basic strokes to use to write characters. So um, my students told me, okay, Miss Wei, writing Chinese characters just like playing puzzles. We just need to know which piece we use to form one or two characters. So which makes the writing much easier. And then after that, that um, students going to learn uh, the basic um, com conversations. So the good thing about material is from starting from lesson one, dialogue one for Chinese one, as you can see, the, the, um, the characters are learned in a conversation format. So as you can imagine, in the second month of the learning, students can, can start to form conversations. So there are skills in language learning for speaking, listening, reading, writing, start to foster from Chinese one. And um, I can quickly show you some samples. Um, this is the family book my Ch Chinese one students made. This is the work uh, during the second month of learning, or the third, I'm sorry, third month of learning, as you can see. 
this the family family book. So the writing about their family member. So they, as you can see, they are able to write in, in complete sentences already, which is amazing. And then in the recent month, um, they actually were able to write articles. They wrote about their own um, hobbies or holidays. So which is uh, really um, amazing. Okay. Um, and then Chinese grammar is similar to English, which includes a subject, verb, and object. We don't change the written form of characters at all. Instead, we add other characters to reflect the time, tense, or quantities. Our students said, after you learn the basics in the first couple of months in Chinese one, everything else will fall in place for the rest of the learning throughout all levels. Our textbooks were written in a highly engaged, engaging manner. Starting from chance one for chance from starting from chance a uh, lesson one from chance one, all lessons are written in dialogues. That means students with a zero learning experience can speak, listen, read, and write co uh, conversations in the second month of learning. All language elements, such as vocabulary and grammar, will be repeatedly used and reinforced. Stories and characters in dialogues will carry on throughout all levels. Video and audio material are corresponding with the dialogues. Students really enjoy the dramas in the stories. Lessons were written with themes in a wide range of topics. Examples are greetings, families, day, dating, school life, weather, renting, shopping, dining, hobbies, date, uh, Chinese geography, high tech, health, education, investment, environmental protection, Chinese history and study abroad, etc. Students' skills in learning, uh, in speaking, listening, reading, writing are developing throughout all levels. Fun, interesting, engaging, hands on, authentic application in real life are the key words in our everyday learning. Our classrooms are full of laughter and vibes. Students have ample practice opportunities individually, in pairs, or in small groups. Individual or small group projects are the norm in all levels. Highlights of popular projects at different levels, including family books, my hobbies, cooking projects, dining, shopping, traveling, dating, debates, college fair, etc. All projects require students to write a recipe for a cooking project, a script or essay, and then present in class. Presentation forms vary depending on the theme. Students use PowerPoint, role plays, singing or video production, etc. Most students are doing very well in all levels. When they reach AP levels, they're all, they're all well prepared to do well in the AP exam. As the second most spoken language in the world, close to English, which is the first one, students carry on their skills and the knowledge and continue to shine in college or future career. All right, I'm going to be speaking about French and Spanish, and uh, we are piloting textbooks this year. We piloted uh, one textbook first semester, um, and we're piloting two textbooks second semester, and we're eager to um, come to an agreement about the um, the best materials moving forward so that we can continue to uh, engage students and have a cohesive curriculum. And so uh, I don't want to say exactly what Nancy just said about Chinese, but we do a lot of the interactive um, practice. Um, one of the things I love about teaching on the block is that I have time to do uh, auditory practice. Uh, we do um, presentational speaking, um, we do interactive speaking, um, we do reading, uh, there's cultural input in every class, um, auditory input, and we're really focusing on developing all four language skills, and there's a big emphasis on culture. And um, as a uh, French, um, a francophile, somebody who really loves French culture, I have brought in a lot of authentic resources, um, such as literature, film, and art, 
um, th that I like to share with my students. And we incorporate this into the curriculum. Thank you. Maybe Korean or um, our Japanese teachers can speak briefly. Yeah, so Korean program, um, also we are in the process of um, upgrading to the to the new textbook, which is more um, is updated based on the new language standard. So we are, um, each lesson is divided into different thematic units and each theme, I focus on interpersonal um, communication, interpretive communication and um, presentational communication. So students go through these steps to, um, to reach the, the proficiency level. So each um, lesson, all the lessons are very, um, is a proficiency oriented and also project based learning so at the at the end student can produce a project that integrates all their learning learnings um, throughout the lesson also um, so each different level so level 1 we start with introduction of the language and second level continuation of level 1 and level 3 and 4 the more focus on writing and um writing and um, literacy also. So also I, I do emphasize a CI-based um, instruction so students can, can improve their literacy throughout their years of learning Korean. Um, and also the culture is an important, um, important part of language learning. And we do emphasize the cultural learning throughout all four years and students are exposed to different activities, different different events and all throughout years of um, years of high school. Thank you. So let me um, briefly introduce what we do in Japanese program, just like other uh, language programs, we are proficiency oriented. So we always think about um, the purpose of our tasks. Um, what you see on this uh, picture um, on top of this cell is, for example, is one of the AP students' work where they learn um, good design award. That's the actual award in Japan that was given to a special project and products and then maybe service project. They learn different criteria that the, the award is uh, designated to, and then they uh, propose their own new design that can impact people's values, that can improve people's lives. So we try to have at the end of each unit something that's real life um, and um, impactful. So that's what we have in mind. That's also appropriate for different levels of proficiency. Um, so that's what we do. Oh, and then in terms of the textbooks, Japanese programs are trying to develop our own curriculum. Um, and we are using our SharePoint uh, website and we are accumulating our own uh, curriculum. So that's something exciting about our program as well. Dr. Waldi, next slide. Uh, before we move on to the next slide, can we go back to um, slide seven, please? Yeah, I want to um, add um, the, those two pictures on the bottom. Um, the one on the left side is the Chinese writing about their hobbies. The second one on the right side is a, a copy of a script that um, Chinese three people created for, our, for their group project at dining, uh, at the restaurants. And then <laughs> the funny part is, they turned into uh, they turned the dining presentation as a romantic uh, candlelight dinner, so which is really really fun. Okay, yeah. Can we move on to slide eight now? Thank you. Okay, I can start, and then um, and the other teachers please chip in. Okay, so um, our whole course is not only about language; it's also about cultural. So of the full name for our AP course is called 
uh, for example, for my language is Chinese language and culture. So culture plays a very important role in our course. So, and you can see the cultures about what? About um, perspectives, practice, practices, and the products. So students need to be prepared from early on. So we actually start to prepare them from chance one. So the good thing about the material is in every lesson at end of each lesson, they actually have a code called cultural literacy. So introduce different topics of culture in, in our target culture. Okay, for example, this is the, uh, the first cultural literacy for Chinese AP class for lesson one in the book is about the major traditional holidays in Chinese culture. So, um, so what we do is we're trying to integrate the, the cultural learning in everyday learning. For example, um, our language has certain ways to use because cultural background, for example, Let's say um, the character we use referring to you, regular character will be me. But when we talk about, when we talk to the seniors or officials like teachers, we actually have another character to use, Ning, so which is shows more respect. So um, in certain ways like this it, uh, throughout uh, our curriculum. And then for AP exam, um, I will just roughly mention here with talk about we will talk about more about AP course later. However, um, in AP exam, they, in, which includes listening comprehension, reading comprehension, uh, conversation, and cultural presentation and writing portion. So all sections all have cultural involved because of cultural reason. You write you you use language in certain ways. So the AP exam is not only testing your language skills, also testing your knowledge about cultures. So um, in our classroom, um, we, we try to create a cultural environment that students embrace in a cultural learning, learning as classroom. For example, we use different type of decorations, as you can see some in my back, um, and all um, we host the class celebrations for, for traditional holidays. So the two major holidays we celebrate in our classrooms are the Mid-Autumn Festival, normally which normally fell in September and then the second one which is the major which is the most important uh, traditional holiday which is Chinese Spring Festival so we hold um, class celebrations we have potluck and we have student we have parents coming to make dumplings on site and the students also learned uh, to make dumplings um, and then we, we ate together, we had um, students did research for the holiday and had a set, uh, presentations in different forms, can be in performances, can be like singing, dancing, uh, um, reciting the poems or um, just use PowerPoint to show different type of uh, products used or activities involved for this holiday. And then as, as an as a advisor of Chinese National Honor Society, or also working with our Chinese Honor Society. And then we also um, try to in, engage in the community celebrations. For example, recently um, in February, the South Coast Botan Garden held its first Lunar New Year celebrations. So they invited my students to perform and also to run activities for the audience. Um, we, my students performed, there's some pictures on the slide you can see, they performed the Chinese drum dance in the red and also the fan dance. The fan dance is not only a regular fan dance, it's also a martial arts, like Tai Chi fan dance. So my students all learned um, different perspective of uh, the Chinese culture. And then for that event, we served 3,311 attendees, which is great. My students are all very happy and they're all thankful to have this opportunity to share what they learned in the classroom with the community. Um, in addition to celebrating um, on campus, uh, we also do uh, field trips. So um, every year we go to a uh, French uh, film festival that takes place uh, annually in uh, Hollywood. 
And um, I know that the teachers at Penn also do a walking field trip over to the Peninsula Center to um, have their students order in French and to enjoy eating at uh, Crème de la Crêpe. Um, also, um, we have uh, a lot of cultural connections with our um, family homestay uh, immersion program, and we have uh, a travel abroad uh, every other year. So um, in addition to the things that Nancy mentioned, I just wanted to say a few things specific to French. Thank you. Maybe we can also um, introduce that at Peninsula High School, we have once a year, a celebration of all the language and culture called World Language Day. And um, depending on um, the year, it has been a week a long celebration. Recent years, we have one day extended lunch break to for each of the language program to showcase culture. And then on the stage in amphitheater, we just recently last week had a, a whole performance from the dance to the taiko drum uh, performances, small wrestling match, and then things like that. And then that's, that brings everybody together. And then um, so we have uh, school wide support for our program. Um, also, also, yeah, we do have a big celebration of all the, all the, um, the languages that are taught here. And um, students um, also participate and um, plan a community-wide event. So a couple of my uh, students, along with other clubs, like jointly, are planning a night market, which will be a community event. And I'm very excited to see how this event is going to be turn out. It will be, it's planned to be um to be in May, mid-May after a B test. So very excited and looking forward to that. So Amy has already oh, mentioned about the exchange program and field trips, and then several of, of our language programs offer similar activities, as well as National Honor Society um, uh, programs as well. We also have guest speakers to talk about specific, to teach some cultural lessons, as well as college reps comes to our campus to talk about um, study abroad programs as well. So for this summer through um, student travel tour um, Explorica, we are making we are going on a um, educational tour to Korea for the first time. And also I'm very excited and um, to to do this one for the, the, this one I'm going on a trip educational trip with my students and teachers um and hope we get to do this um on a regular basis in the future and um we have uh, clubs that meet monthly um, and are very active on campus uh, and supporting language culture. And for example, for French club, you don't have to speak French to participate in the club. Um, you do, however, need to be enrolled in French class to become a member of the Honor Society. And you need to um, be in a good standing in a level three honors or in level four AP. So there are some requirements to join the um, National Honor Society. Thank you. Yes, um, our Chinese National Honor Society did the same thing that other teachers mentioned. Um, one more thing I want to add is that um, we do uh, we have a lot of joint activities with other cultural clubs, such as the Asian Cultural Club. And that go the, the very famous popular um, board game in Asian countries. Uh, go game uh, uh, it's called a Go Club, 
Um, so we host a lot of joint activities for our the schools, uh, our students and the staff at the school. I think we're ready to move on to next slide, please. All right, so for, for this slide, um, this is mainly about uh, AP course. So um, all the description on the top applies to all AP courses, Chinese, French, Japanese, Latin, and Spanish. So all Chinese culture is equivalent to the intermediate level college course in the language. Um, and also, um, I'm sorry. So the um, students cultivate their understanding of the language and culture by applying the interpersonal, interpretive, and presentational modes of communication in real life situations as they explore concepts related to family and community, personal and public identity, beauty and aesthetics in science and technology, contemporary life and global challenges. Um, there are six themes in AP, AP courses for all languages. So as you can see listed on the left side in the circles and the three modes of communications. So the all the purpose of, I'm sorry, I should say the objective of a course is to foster the communicative skills. So there, there are three modes of communication. The first one is interpersonal modes of communication via speaking and writing. So students communicate by uh, personal, interpersonally speaking or writing with others. The second one is interpretive mode of communication via listening and reading. So students interpret the contents of written or audio texts. Um, and th the third one is presentational modes of communication via speaking or and writing to the audience. So students communicate with others um, with, by uh, spoken with spoken or written presentations. So those are the main skills we are forcing from level one. Next slide. And as we get close to wrapping up our webinar, I wanted to talk to the families about the Seal of Biliteracy. Uh, it is an award given to schools and actually to students in recognition of um, their attaining proficiency in two or more languages. And it encourages students to pursue biliteracy uh, and really it, it's attractive to future employers and especially the colleges. But the idea that we wanna honor students um, for being biliterate and um, the ability to learn more than one language. Next slide, Dr. Waldi. And so um, just some of the ways to obtain the seal of biliteracy is that students must be on track to complete high school graduation with a 2.0 or above. They need to receive a standards met or above on the 11th grade SPAC in English. And if they're an English learner to receive a four on the LPAC. And in order, again, to receive the seal of biliteracy, they must have one of the following. So either complete a four-year high school course of study in the target language um, with an overall GP of 3.0 or higher, or demonstrate oral proficiency in a language comparable to that uh, that is required to pass an AP or an IB examination. We don't have an IB program at our school, but there are some students that do take another language that is outside of the, uh, the six, five languages that we offer in Palos Verdes. So, uh, they are able to take a comprehensive language assessment approved by the district. And if they uh, prove proficiency, they will also be eligible for, for the SEAL. Um, or they could pass the AP World Language with an exam score of three or higher. They Or they could, if their language has an SAT subject test, they can also uh, provide or prove proficiency by getting a score of 600 or higher. And this is available for students um, that are in 11th grade or 12th grade. Um, and that is pretty, next slide, Dr. Wazi. So that is pretty much it for our webinar. Thank you all so much for attending. Uh, we have such a robust offering of languages. And as you can see, like passionate teachers that care deeply about their languages and subject that they teach. So thank you teachers that are here. Our final webinar will be on Thursday, April 20th for English Language Arts. And have a wonderful evening. Thank you all so much for coming and uh, have have a good rest of your week. We're almost at spring break. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.